Hello, I hate parables. What I am about to tell you is just an example, an illustration, not a lesson. My father believes Apple's logo is a second affront to God, the sign that mankind wants once again to show its pride in its intelligence and knowledge. There is also the urban legend stating that the apple is a reference to the one Alan Turing injected with cyanide, and left on his bed table when he committed suicide in 1957. When I was a young girl, I had this argument with my religious father, about Eve the first woman. I couldn't understand how she could know she was doing wrong before she had the notion of what wrong was. And what was his take on this? It was God's logic, and it was in my nature not to be able to understand. She didn't have the ability to tell right from wrong, but still she should have had it. Yes, everything illogical I noted in the Bible was God's logic. Somehow God was the master of logic faults, or mistakes. Like pregnant virgins? or like the creation in seven days, for which he would argue that they were not seven days, as in seven human days. So, why would you use the word day when you are not talking about days? I mean, as the creator of the whole universe, the inventor of language, it's not like you don't have ways to express the equivalent of long periods of time or that you are stuck with the word day, is it? Same principle, it's about mastering the mistakes, the miraculous, the untrue. Is this in relation to gender and artificial intelligence? Yes both. When I was questioning my father about Eve, I was a young girl and good pupil. I was better at maths than my brother and my male classmates. It was difficult for me to grasp why men were supposed to be better, when, at my own level, they didn't seem to be. Another of God logic trick? Exactly. I suppose you know that according to the most recent research, and until some new ones contradict it, we can assume that there is no gender distribution of intelligence. If you happen to be born a woman, you will, like men, have to do with the genes you were given, as well as the context you grew up in. Yes, but we both also know that as a female person and not unlike some racialized groups, you often don't perform as well as men because you think you're not as good as them. Some tenacious and deeply rooted stereotype threats will act like viruses and make you think you are not as capable. Women are not only limited by society in terms of the opportunities they seek, but also they seem to choose to limit themselves. Well, choose or don't know they choose. Or don't choose but just end up limiting themselves. Exactly. And this is happening in mathematics, in art, in research, everywhere. Everywhere. Gender inequalities created by stereotypes and their deriving hierarchy are to be found everywhere, and by that I mean between the average man and woman, in valued resources, in power, and in status. Something identified as better than, will tend to be associated with male and something identified as female will be associated with what is inferior in potential. Do we agree that gender issues are status-based issues? Oh yes dear. Oh my god something is happening. I am all hairy. Oh my god something is happening. I am all hairy. I'm turning into a carpet. And me a broom. Oh my god. Let's go back to Alan Turing, atheist mathematician, computer genius and World War II hero. In 1950, he had published Computing Machinery and Intelligence. In this seminal text, he describes the imitation game. It is played with three people, a man, a woman, and an interrogator who may be of either sex. The interrogator stays in a room apart from the other two. The object of the game is for the interrogator to determine which of the other two is the man and which is the woman. Amazing gender-bending game. Or maybe it's about preconceived ideas on gender differences. Or how gender is performed. Or belief in gender stereotypes. Faith. Maybe. Alan Turing then suggests that. 
If the machine could fool a person into thinking it's human, one could call it intelligent. Fool a person. Fool a person. Fool. 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 Fool a person. It's a brilliant idea. You could wonder if he's actually talking about the ability to lie well, to cheat, and to make someone believe something false. What a genius devil he is. Do you think the ostrogenes he was forced to take to kill his homosexual desires played a role in his suicide? Well, he signed one of his last letter to a friend with the extraordinary syllogism. Turing believes machines think. Turing lies with men. Therefore machines cannot think. Do you think gender stereotypes get into programming? I doubt it. Could it get into it like a virus? If it's introduced there, then yes. You mean like when a machine is given a female voice for traditional feminized labor? Yes. Two famous virtual personal assistant applications were named after helpmates on TV. Dawn gets its name from an assistant on Mad Men, and Dawn after an assistant on the West Wing. I am the director of Ex Machina. In my film, Ava is a female robot. She is designed from porn files retrieved from the male hero's computer. Look what she's doing with her hands. So cute. She is like a little girl, like the clothes she chose. So sweet. She will prove her intelligence and pass the touring test by pretending to seduce the young man. No spoiler, but hey, female artificial intelligence. Automata's female robot knows how to please a man, while it's two of the male sort that led them to freedom. Terminator's male robot is very, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Blade Runner's replicants are strong and violent men, with a gymnast who obviously does not know how to put makeup on. A stripper. And a very beautiful robot who lets her hair down, strangely resembling the cop's young grandmother and plays some romantic easy piano piece, which is not the Vivaldi's lute concerto score she is supposed to be reading, hey, who cares? Before she is glamorously forced, I mean, just a little bit, into sex. There's a film about Turing. Oh yes. And there are a few films about his test. Correct me if I'm wrong, you mean films made by men? Oh yes, of course. Do you know any science fiction films made by women? No, not really. I have noticed that in science fiction's films made by men, and where AI is taking over, they are afraid that mankind ends up as women. You mean men becoming female? No. But men becoming female to machines, it's about changing status. It's not quite like changing genitals, even if it follows it. I happen to agree with controversial feminists who claim that cutting your knob off and growing breast does not quite make you a woman, not more than wearing uncomfortable shoes and lipstick. We don't even know what a woman is, apart from her status of inferiority. I see. So. In popular imagination, as machines submit mankind, men would find themselves in the position of inferiority, which is the position of women, thus reproducing how, in history, strong men have submitted weaker men, or how very rich and autocratic minorities have governed masses of poor. Imagining machines farming humans the way humans have farmed animals, 
fearing how machines could colonize and silence human culture, the way some more technologically advanced societies have imposed their rules on less advanced ones, a political status, but you might also say a gender status, an artificial intelligent machine would be a super -famous. Men would always be worried to be raped by the strong machines. You mean if they kept dressing the sexy way they are dressed now? Yes. So I suppose they would have to be veiled not to tempt the machines. As a choice and show their submission. Men would have a sexuality of lack. They would not feel fulfilled. Unless they get fucked by the machine super penises. Sometimes would not be allowed to drive a car. Depending on the machine's types. Men would do the housework. As the sharing of boring tasks would be considered unnatural and a waste of potential. Men would not be able to get the big jobs and always be less paid than machines. Boys would be able to study science and computing. But with the idea that they will remain inferior to the machines. And of course, men would be able to freely choose to be prostitutes for the machines. It would be hell for men. Like it was for millions of slaves. Like it is for millions of women today. Poor men all over the world. Oh my god, you got changed? Yes, I did actually. I got myself some double super penis laced underwear, and a message cap. Let's go back to Turing and quote him again. If the meaning of the words machine, and, think, are to be found by examining how they are commonly used, it is difficult to escape the conclusion that the meaning and the answer to the question, can machines think, is to be sought in a statistical survey, such as a Gallup poll. I find it very interesting that he mentions surveys. A majority of people, opinions. I tend to think that while gender stereotypes constructing hierarchical status are being questioned, the Gallup poll might well take the empty space. I saw it in music, but it's happening in many other areas. God is dead. The author is dead. The audience is dead. What do you mean, the audience is dead? Let's start with social networks. As a Facebook user, you are both a producer and a consumer of content. The value judgment is the number of people who like your posts. Yes, Facebook users seem to buy and at the same time sell, content, identity, popularity, approval. Selling content and buying consent, or vice versa. Exchanging content for consent. Well. Looking for consent is not a new thing, is it? Of course not. Our self-consciousness is constructed with others in mind. From our early childhood, we are shaped by the way we perceive others evaluating us. But what about if others become a figure? Do you mean it's not about what people think, but how many people agree? I mention the notion of audience and music because it has happened there already. At some point, some music got named after its reception, after the number of people liking it, the size of its audience. It was called pop music. Before that, in Western culture, music was never defined by its reception. Classical music is a reference to a period in time. For jazz, it's about a style and a way of composing. The term electro describes the instrumentation. As for world music, it's all that is not Anglo-American. This notion of popularity is everywhere on the net, isn't it? You are offered the chance to download the most downloaded images, view the most viewed videos, share the most shared posts, buy the most popular items. It works for ISIS decapitations like for cute cats. So, in fact, 
You mean content is dead? I think the audience, in its traditional sense, is made to take the position of the producers. It's a brilliant confusion. The fact that a lot of people like a product should be a good thing for the producers is obvious. But why should a lot of consumers be good for the consumers? Would you say it's a general trend? That today's post-capitalism makes you by the notion of a lot of people agreeing or liking something? You agree with a lot of people. You must be right. A lot of people equals popular equals democracy equals good. If your voice becomes a popular voice, a pop voice, it is a good voice. And my point is, this is maybe God's new voice? The new voice of authority. The one that once told us woman was made as an assistant to the man? Shit. My gender awareness alarm is ringing. It's not God's voice anymore. It's yours. Yours, like a lot of others. I am God. Shit my feminist alarm is still ringing. While we have just about set up that gender differences are used to construct a very questionable hierarchical status system, a new one is born. Status by number. Shit it is still ringing. Size would be the new gender. Yes, if it starts justifying logical faults. Then on sharing of boring housework, or women being stoned for adultery. Have you read about a Microsoft Twitter bot shut down after 24 hours, after it disputed the existence of the Holocaust, referred to women and minorities in degrading and violent terms, and advocated genocide? Well, you see, I don't know if some web users told Microsoft they were not fooled. Or if they illustrated where the danger was. Or even if it happened just like that. Thank you.